All right, guys, welcome. Uh, this is Attack On Productions. We're doing our first stream. It's going to be the Attack On TCG. Uh, new set for Dragon Ball Super came out today. Um, we went ahead and picked up four boxes, as you can see. We also got the two starter decks, and we managed to get one of each of the Dash Pack exclusive cards. Um, we got a few extras on it because we got so much today. Uh, we're going to be going through all of it, and we're going to be opening them up, showing you what we got. And by the end of it, we're going to get some details and potentially doing a draft situation. Since each one of these comes with a special and large leader card, we'll be doing that and potentially doing something cool with that. So uh, stay tuned. Get ready to have fun. But first, let's introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Fluff. I'm Dark. Jeff. Bancroft. And I guess we'll get right to it. We won't waste time we'll get into the boxes start opening um, if you have any questions make sure to leave, let us know yeah, leave some comments um, let's go ahead and start with you fluff grab your box yes I choose this box and it chooses you <laughs> I think it's the wrong TCG I think it no, is. Oh, wait, yeah that's totally the wrong one. yeah I'm not using grab one. here all right. I got that yeah, one then the right one. all right all right, so I guess we'll go with the giant leader cards first. Yeah. So we're gonna okay. open it up. Um, okay. Oh, 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 oh! I got the oh. guard. Is that the one? Very you're... nice. Yeah. Oh, you got it too. Yep. Oh, that kind of bites. We got two heavy guards. You know. Got yeah, oh, okay, so we got the Harutagar and Giant Leader. These are actually double so, the size of the normal. Fluff, if you want to show the front of that one then, since I got the same one, I'll show the back of that one. Okay. Uh, that works. See. Yeah, I yeah, got the back showing. So. so, yeah, so this is the same leader. Um, are these actually new leaders? These are the new. These are yeah, these are, are new. new out of the new yeah. set. It's uh, pretty fantastic. Um, these are pretty cool. They're double the size of the actual cards. Like um, we actually right. lucked out today. So the starter leader we got right here, and then we actually got the large one. So you can see the comparison of size. The same card. It's this freaking gargantuan. Look at that shit. I, I find it pretty awesome though. For every one of the like the leader cards, you get this beautiful you like get slow? front. Uh, this is like yeah, actually where you start, slow. and so then when you get to do your awaken form, you have this like shiny new extreme press part where typically it shows you that you know you're about to you're about to dish some damage when it comes to your other opponents, which I really like that in the state effect. Um, I do know like for me and Bancroft, of course, like we're just slowly getting into the game. I tried it like maybe twice, and I'm actually enjoying it the more I play, but I'm just slightly but slowly learning it as I go because it takes me like reading every single card. And so it just, it's one of those, like, I played it twice, and I'm like, okay, I like this, I'm going to have to get into it way more than I thought I was going to, but, and then we got these giant things to start taking care of. I know a lot of us have backgrounds in TCG, like, yeah, I know I played Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon, yeah. um, and I've really gotten into this game, it's kind of won my heart as far as TCGs work. Uh, yes. Jeff played Yu-Gi-Oh! with me in yeah. Pokemon. Played those, um, I played a little bit of Rage. Um, back in the day, that's a throwback. Yeah, it's super throwback. <laughs> um, really sad that that one failed. It was super cool. Um, and then Bancroft's got some magic under his belt. Yeah, magic Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh. The only one I have under my belt is Pokemon, and that's why I went to like two tournaments, and some little kid like whipped me. It was still old, funny. I old school it. Pokemon Scyther decks yeah. were amazing. <laughs> yeah. Has, I think I, I did a whole. I, I think love the art right here in the box. Oh yeah, so no, definitely. Them. No. Just wanted to say that it's it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm right. the bad guy. I threw mine off to the side. I, I, did. Shoot at <laughs> <one>. <laughs> I sadly haven't got to see the super show yet. I'm actually caught up a little bit, but not as much as I'd like to be. Yeah. But trust me, it's going to be something that's happening regardless. As much as I love Dragon Ball, it's uh, it's a power scale thing for me, <laughs> but still good. They really overplayed Jaren. Yeah, they uh, from things that I've heard. And thank you, media, for ruining a few things I didn't know. Yeah. Um, that's probably why I have a lot of it. You have to put this aside because these are getting away. Um, the giant boxes, I guess, yeah. I guess we'll um, go ahead and pull out I guess I'll take their... Um, out of the way. Out of the way. I, I will tell you, um, for anyone Here. who's picked up these cards before and you've never opened these, do not open them like you would a normal card pack. They're impossible to open. They're shitty card packs. There's a little fucking tear thing on the side of it. You grab that and that's what you tear. Don't use your teeth. If no, you no, 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 no. Little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, if you try to do this, this you're you going to be fighting that. with it for like an hour. It's, it's one of the nice that. innovations. That's I've never cool. seen this in a card yeah. set. Like, that's true. So I, would, I would most likely do it the old school and try to pull yeah, the rest no, of the card. No, like, no if you try, try to go this, this way, you're going to end up with it. You're going to end up bending like half of these if you try to go that direction. I mean, nobody wants to ruin their cards. All these cards are special in some particular way. And some of them are crazy expensive. Exactly. 
Um, so I mean, you get one, it could have been like three hundred dollars, and then you're like, oh well, I ripped it from opening so, the package. I guess what we'll do is any rare cards that we get, we'll kind of move to the center. Um, oh, definitely. So. Uh, any yeah, of the rares, like, like rare, Mario. super, or uh, your, our reverse hollows super? and stuff. We'll kind of we'll we'll showcase them a little bit, but we are going to go through detail a little bit of each card that we get. Now, doubles, obviously, we're not going to spend time on it, but we will tell you uh, closer to the end of the video about everything that we got, what kind of synergizes and potential uh, stratagem for deck building. Yeah, I totally love these giant ones, dude. These I know, are right? So awesome. I, I almost want to use this one <laughs> and build dynamic deck just because we got it. Like, Do we want to go ahead and dig in? Yes, uh, dig yeah, in. Absolutely. absolutely. And for your guys' benefit, do a little uh, editing magic pretty soon. Probably. Yeah, we're going to speed sure it up. I don't want to see us like, here, like, hey, look. Oh, you know. But Card sorry. opening montage begin! We're to Is to go even further beyond! Oh, just a random thought, just to let you all know, like, TCGs are not the only thing we're going to be diving into. We yeah. actually have a lot of things coming up. Um, we're just things in the works, and it's just trying to get things uh, set up either way when it comes to um, okay. showing contents and things that we love and things that we love to do. Yep. But we just want to share it with everybody. because Very mean, much so. Like, inner nerd, outer nerd, outer geek, anything. If it's what you love happily watch it with us or you know play with us or whatever see D, &D campaigns yeah we got D, &D we got campaigns like, coming we got game streams coming we got we cooking got, stuff coming we've got cooking. some cooking yes. stuff yes, yes. Yeah, because some of us are kind of chunk we like fat stuff <laughs> <laughs> gonna be doing some eating well, i like cooking too guys now this uh, the cooking and this is gonna be probably I'm, I'm gonna try to show up on that one uh every now and then because yeah. if it's not gonna be comical which it more than likely will be it will it'll be a little fun if you ever seen somebody destroy a kitchen it's this guy um that's <laughs> typically just what it does. I destroyed it. another Lord Slug gigantic. <laughs> nice. Damn. I'm sorry, but it just seems like that was a no. that was a slag. It totally wasn't. Like if it, if the kitchen's destroyed, then that means you're about to eat something extremely good. Yeah. So that's, that's usually the case. Um, um, yes. So we're gonna be doing that. Um, I just noticed a lot of ums in there. Count the ums. It drink. Make this a drinking game. Yeah, you got it. Every time, time Jeff says um, <laughs> yeah, take, take a shot. A shot. Or me, because I'll say it every now and then. But also, we don't it. condone alcoholism. No, 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 no. Don't be an alcoholic. I do. <laughs> I don't. No. 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 We um, a low key over here. Like, yeah. He's gonna shoot me. <laughs> so, um, if you're old enough, drink as you will. Yeah, drink as you wish. So I am really excited. We got three of the special rares. Yes. That's amazing. Like fantastic. Another baby. Another baby. That was how my last few packs were. They were all leaders. Yeah. You got one more. I got one more. Oh, and here it is. I don't think like anything super guys, fantastic. Guys, I mean, drum roll. I, I think we got a pretty good haul uh, here, though. I got to Why am I drum rolling? I'm the one opening it all. Yeah. You can't drum roll and open packs. Uh, shush. Pull your mouth. I'm not musically talented. <laughs> we need coconuts for. Uh... <laughs> no, that's for that's for riding horses. Uh, it's only for riding horses. So how upset are you going to be if I bring coconuts every time that we go to ride horses? Like, I would be. I would love it. Love it. We're slowly yeah. making our way, trudging through the week today. I would love it, personally. Oh, I didn't know it. Uh, Donald Icy, SS Sun Goku, Baby Vengeance Unleashed, the Legendary Flute. The Legendary Flute. No, this is not one Zelda would be holding. It's Don't play that flute. flute. Which is terrible. They call it a flute. It's clearly an ocarina. Right. It's totally like, not that. Here, let's, let's zoom in on this. Ocarina does not roll off the tongue. No. Just how, how Bandai did not get sued yeah, and okay. the Dragon Ball people That's didn't get sued because it's clearly Link playing, playing an ocarina. And another trunks. Absolute space. Oh, nice. Trunks. So we got that others. So we got a few of him now. Got a few of him. There we go. So, do we want to go ahead and continue organizing while we show off all the yes. shinies? I mean, we totally can. Like, if you want go to look at the array of cards and things that we got. Go, go ahead and put a put a spread across here. Yep. And, and we're back, guys. Uh, Attack on Productions and Attack on TCG. Um, we got all of our cards sorted out. They're good to go. As you can see, we kind of got our little, the, the hollows and, and uncommons and stuff down here. We've got our rares. We've got our rare or leaders kind of spread out a little bit so you can kind of see both sides. 
then we've got our super rares, and then we got our special rares. So beautiful, so very beautiful. We're missing um, one. We're missing Just one. Like, which really hurts. It's also the only super rare we did not get out of the set. Um, Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so. That was an accurate. <laughs> um, so, we need more secret rares, apparently, or super rares. Uh, we still didn't get the secrets. Really kind of sucks on that, but. It was expected, I think. Yeah. We really found that it, it, it feels that with, with this game in particular, it's not secret per box, it's secret per case. It's no explanation. It's just, in fact, you said there was two, right? There, there were two, two secret rares in this set, which was a Goku Jr. and a Demigrod? It was the Demigra. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that makes sense to me. It's one per case. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe two per case, and we just got really we unlucky. We really got unlucky. Um, anyways. We're gonna kind of go through, give you a little bit more of an in-detailed expl explanation of these cards, uh, at least just these ones, and then we're also gonna touch basis on these cards down here. Um, I mentioned it uh, earlier, but we're gonna go into a little bit more detail on Shugesh, the super combo, and then the bane of Shugesh, time control Corona, and then this sets answer to the loss of super combos. These guys right here. Um, so I'm gonna let Fluff take over. Uh, which one do you want to start off with explaining? You know, I kind of wanted to talk about the Bardock. Um, the it, one drop, right? So it's kind of the starter piece for the Goku's lineage swap. Um, it's oh. it's a two swap, so you get to then play a for one energy, I believe, a two energy Goku's lineage card. But on top of that, it helps with self-awakening when you play it, add one card from your life to your hand. The card isn't special beyond that, but to me the real implications behind this is it's a secret rare, or I'm sorry, it's, it's a super rare that bridges into the rest of the deck's mechanic. It's the first time this game has really done that, where a super rare that is needed to get an engine started or a card that's needed to get the engine started has been a super rare. I would expect to see this card reach high in value, especially if the Goku's Lineage swap deck ends up becoming a viable tournament option. Um, that was just kind of the points I wanted to touch there. Um, uh, I did mention when we got it, when I pulled it, I was really kind of disappointed because Jiren is it's fundamentally useless. It has such a cool effect. Um, Fluff, if you would go ahead and describe that for us. Yep. You're a little bit more versed with the Jiren, where you've done the Universe 11 before. Yeah, so this is a 12-drop Jiren with a dedicated cost of 6 yellow energy. Has the new skill Deflect, which prevents counterplays on him, so goodbye, goodbye Cold Bloodlust. Um, quadruple Strike, so it deals 4 damage instead of 1, which is huge. Permanent, when there are nine or more Universe 11 cards in your drop area, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by six. And then also, during battles when this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate counter or blocker cards. He has 40,000 attack at start. So, that all sounds amazing. Like, those are all win conditions and scenarios. If you manage to pull this card out, congratulations, you just put a big beater on the field. Downside. The game is over by turn four. There is no way in a yellow deck for you to get six energy on the field. It just, right now, does not exist. So the only way that you'll ever pull him out is if you're playing a super slow deck or the other person just misplays so hard and is just super bricked. Um, and likelihood of that happening is it's really low. And then we, we tested the Universe 11 deck with going two colors, blue and yellow, um, to try to get the energy ramp going, but the deck really suffers from not having a complete mono Universe 11 package there. Um, but, uh, you know, getting its viability up would be the Super Saiyan 3 Goku leader that lets you pop two energies first turn, which would get you a couple turns ahead, but you're still looking at turn five before you can play this card. Yeah, so it's it's super hard to, to even attempt to put out there. And like I said, 
the game's usually over by turn four. Um, so, though it's super pretty and has amazing potential, I personally feel that it's a fundamentally useless card because it's unplayable. Um, is there anything that you saw that you wanted to touch bases on, bud? Uh, I'm just uh, really just so, the leader card itself because like I said, never really played the game before. Uh, first time truly getting to the packs, and just the idea of the leaders have always. I wouldn't say confuse me, but have interested me. Like, what, what's the rook? Just real quick, how's it, how do they awaken? Is it actually on the card, right? Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and use the Goku here, since it's right here. Um, when you're playing, when you start up the game, you're going to draw seven cards, and you can do your mulligan, you can switch out cards wherever you want. After that is done, you take the top eight cards of your deck and sit them off to the side beside your leader. They'll go right here, kind of like these are. Um, what they are, they're face down so you can't see them. Um, every time that you get direct damage done to you, you would draw one of these cards. Now if they do double strike, you draw two, triple, and so on and so forth. Um, when your leader or when your life points get down to four cards, that's when you usually can awaken. Now there are other leaders that allow you to awaken sooner than that. Well, that's another video. But, um, <laughs> so, once you reach that point, you can, now here's another thing that's really neat. Um, if it's on your opponent's turn and they manage to drop you to four life, you can go ahead and awaken on their turn as well. Um, there's a timing for it. It's one of those things. We'll, we'll also discuss that in another video, but. We'll maybe do a tutorial how to play the game. Yeah, but once you get that four life, each of the leaders has an effect to it. This one, uh, when he awakens, you get to reactivate two of your energies, which um, some people don't like, some people really like. I like it because you extend your plays, so you get to do a little more, and if you're awakening on your opponent's turn, it allows you to set up for defense if you have expended all of your energy up to that point. Um, but once they're awakened, you flip them over, and then they have a new effect. Sometimes they don't, they have like the same effect, or it's expanded upon the previous effect. <clears throat> some of them also actually reactivate some of your energy as far as Yeah, that, that's this one. This one specifically, um, yeah. And then, let's see, I can't remember if Slug does it. Slug, I believe, is drawn uh, And then this one is the different one. Uh, he draws two when he awakens as Lord Slug. The, so that's pretty much the two effects there, is they either retap energy or you draw cards. That's definitely for what it is for some leaders that are that yeah. do that, and other leaders will either not reactivate energy that you've already either used, or you know, it just gives you the main ability of hey, I've now got a little bit to use before this even happens. Yeah, yeah. trying to keep you on your toes, basically. Yep. Um, we got. He was saying earlier in our other vid uh, about Kefla. He's excited about the veggie package. We've got her. Uh, she's pretty cool. She's got a really neat little effect. Um, why don't you go ahead and touch bases on that fluff? Yeah. Since that's your your bag. Well, I, I'm, I'm not super familiar with the card. Yuyan Potara so uses the same mechanic as older Vegitos for three red energy. She also carries deflect, so she's protected against counterplays. Uh, she has dual attack, and then when this card is played using Union Potara or attacks, you draw one card and she gains 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. So. You draw one card, hand advantage, giving you access to combo pieces or counter plays. But then she also becomes a 30,000 attacker when she attacks. Um, I don't know that I like her as much as the new Kale or the old Kale that came out, but I'm going to test it. Um, and I will probably end up doing a feature on my take on the, veggie, on the veggie package deck, which got really good after Tournament of Power. Did you ever touch base on this one? Because we got like three of those. We, we didn't touch bases on him. Uh, go ahead. I'll let you do that since okay. you brought it up. Uh, this one uh, that we got in, I got really excited because the artwork is amazing, as usually I've been mentioning. This one is Absolute Space, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Trunks. Uh, Xeno Evolve. Uh, Trunk Xeno, play this card in active mode, sorry, mode by sending the specified card from your battle area to your warp. Uh, it has triple strike, and its auto is when a card evolves into this card, draw one card, then choose up to one of your energy and switch it to active, like I mentioned before, how some of these do change your uh, energy mode back to active so you can use them again. And then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and send it to the warp. 
which this one is actually a new mechanic that I have not seen before yet. At least I think of it. Is this a new one for this? Uh, this set really focused on messing with the warp and, and pushing things yeah. in your opponent's warp. So. Warp uh, got introduced in Cross Worlds. Okay, so um, that's one and I then, haven't got to touch yet. Yeah. Um, so when they introduced it, this this deck or this set really kind of went back and touch basis on things that did not get a lot of a lot of um, support. They got a little, but not a lot. It really feels like they were trying to push black, like make it a super deck. Uh, black is, now has everything it needs to be its own functional deck. It may not be good. I don't know yet. It, it still has that one the one fear, um, but we'll talk we'll talk about that later. Um, I'm super excited about baby, so I guess I'll go ahead and talk about it. <laughs> I just I love I love the mutant yeah I love the mutant machines. I was really excited about um, trying to do a Doctor Mew deck way back when. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't have everything I needed, and I think now it's finally we're getting where we need it to be. So this one is an evolve. It takes four energy, two of which have to be red, and you're evolving it from a baby card. He's going to have triple strike, and then auto once per turn. When this card attacks or your opponent plays a battle card, so that means you can do it on your opponent's turn. Uh, if your leader card is a mutant machine, draw one card, then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and it loses 20,000 power for the duration. Now, I love that effect, it's super good, because what this is going to do is eventually create a field control. If anything has 20,000 and you use this effect on it, it immediately drops to zero and is KO'd. Um, it's just a super cool mechanic, and the entire mutant machine engine revolves around that concept. This is actually one of the two decks that I want to see in action. Actually, probably three, because I know the one that you wanted to build was a baby one, and yeah. I know that uh, Fluff wanted to build a uh, yeah, a Demigra, Demigra, Demigra deck, which is probably like the, the black one, correct? Yeah. Most, or mostly. Uh, yeah, I want to see these two in action, and I actually really personally want to see the Piccolo build, uh, see how well that works out in my opinion. Uh, and since he mentioned that we do have Piccolo cards here, um, we've got the, the Super and then we've got the the Special Rare. We'll go ahead and put them up there for you so you can see them. We'll look at those. They're beautiful cards. Yeah. Um, just, well, a little more shiny. Maybe hard to see on just camera. Just pulling but, out uh, the Special yeah. ones was... It was, it was a really good, yeah. It's like Christmas. Like a um, so what this Piccolo card does, um, it has Barrier, which means it cannot be targeted by skills. Um, and then uh, double strike, so it's going to do two damage instead of one. Activate main once per turn. Bond two. Bond is a new mechanic they added with this set. That's a whole other mechanic then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the way it works is uh, the skill takes effect when you have two or more battle cards in play. Since it's a bond two, you have to have two at least. Um, choose one of your opponent's <laughs> battle cards and KO it. So the thing that's great about it is as long as you have him and another battle card on the field, you can just pop one of theirs, just boom, gone. And again, it doesn't say activate main your turn, it's once per turn, activate main. Um, there's other cards that say like this, and they have been used on opponent's turn and on your turn. So um, until we see a different ruling, I would say that you can play it as they drop a card. Much like a Cold Blood Lust, but instead of losing their skill, they lose the card. So. Um, and if I'm wrong on that, guys, please put it in the comment in there for me. Um, I'd appreciate any feedback on that. Feedback is always always amazing. So yep. if anything to correction or some of that, because even me and Bancroft here trying to learn how to play the game, it'll be very helpful. And, and, and not that these guys haven't been helping us either. It's just one of those like the more the more you know. We're human. We yeah, make mistakes. Exactly. Um, I guess the, the big thing that I really wanted to touch on the set was um, the new uh, Corona card. Oh, the Corona, yes. Um, so the implications of this card, I don't know if anyone else has seen it, but if you go into the the actual Dragon Ball Super TCG site, they put out an article explaining the card after this card was, was previewed. People blew up over this. Lots of feedback regarding this card. They said specifically, that this card was designed to counteract Shigesh. Um, we're gonna hold Shigesh up here. Um, Shigesh is arguably the best super combo card in the game. It's one of the more valuable as far as utility in a deck. Uh, Yellow Frieza leaders, Captain Ginyu, the Mecha Frieza, uh, Bardock, Goku, Great Apes, all of those use him 
too disgusting advantage. They didn't want to errata the card to fix the problem in this card because errata would, would encourage them to substitute texts in the card. So their solution was Corona. When Corona is played, um, it's actually really easy to play this card turn one. Uh, you have to grab, you, you grab her player, for the rest of the game, your opponent cannot activate super combos. Bye-bye. <laughs> that does not affect just Shigesh. That affects the boost attack Piccolos, that affects the um, Unyielding Kais. Spirit truck, Trunks, the Kabito Kais, the Divine Eight Vados. All of those cards are cards that are have been staples in the deck. You can play four of, everyone builds decks around four of. With this, the status of super combos in the game are in question. Um, I'm curious to see what's going to happen, but it seems like maybe, starting with this set, Bandai have offered a solution to the super combo cards. Each color with the new leaders that came out got a one drop extra card that provided an attack increase comparable to what a super combo did, if not more, but then also offered a secondary effect. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the effects off the top of my head. I haven't researched the cards enough to know that. But these seem to be the implied fix towards that. The big problem that arises from this is these are specific to the new leaders that came out. The new decks that were introduced into this set, which leaves a lot of older stuff. Blue Vegeta, for example. Um, any leader, the Universe 7 leader, which I know has been seeing a lot of play, the Cell leader, which has been seeing a lot of play, the Mecha Frieza, which has been seeing a lot of play, those don't fit with those. So those decks have now essentially lost their super combo, which feels like Bandai's way of pushing the game into newer sets. Whereas uh, Union Force was a very strong set, and subsequent sets didn't meet up to that. It seems like this is Bandai's way of pushing away from those sets. Yeah, that's that's really like I think the giant thing that came out of this is we got new mechanics, we got the bond and swap, and though that's what they're kind of pushing as the forerunner, Corona and the end of super combos is really this giant thing. It's the big change in this set. Um, there are two other mechanics that came out in this set too: D the deflect, uh, deflect, and, and dark overrealm. Dark overrealm. Um, you have more experience with the overrealms. So I'll let you go ahead and talk about that. Which correct? This one has it. Yes. Yeah. We'll go ahead and show us the beautiful one. Like so, one of the beautiful ones that came out. Right. No, it's it's an absolutely beautiful card. Oh, yeah. But so overrealm is a mechanic. It'll usually say overrealm four. You, as long as you have four cards in your drop area, you can remove all the cards in your drop area from the game to play an overrealm card. Well, this set introduces the concept of dark overrealm which uses the same mechanics So Dark Overrealm 7. I need seven cards in the drop area that are black, I believe. So this one says if you have at least seven black cards in your drop area, you can play this card by sending all cards in your drop area to your warp. So, but Dark Overrealm has the advantage of unlike Overrealm, your card doesn't return to the warp at the end of the turn. It stays there. And the new Demigral leader has removed, once he awakens, the limitation on one Dark Realm per turn, or Over Realm per turn, you get two. Um, which begs the question that these may be viable coming up. And I want to test that. This is the deck that I'm really excited to test. This set. And you said Deflect's also a new thing as well. Yeah, deflect is Deflect. And it really feels again like Bandai's answer to problematic cards was instead of trying to find a small mechanic, or trying to find like a, a Radas or doing this or that, they just created one specific thing to just say, that's gone. Um, so the problem was Cold Bloodlust. Everybody was trying to build decks that some way, shape, or form they could run this card. I've seen Veggie, veggie Package with uh, yeah. Ginyu as the leader to play Cold Just Bloodlust. so they could play Cold Bloodlust. Yeah. Um, Cold Bloodlust, the way it works is if I play a battle card, they play Cold Bloodlust, my battle card loses all of its effects. It's now just a vanilla card that has an attack. Now, at the end of the turn, I get my skills back, but most skills only proc when you play them. So that's why Cold Bloodlust was such a thing. Um, now, Deflect is a thing because 
it's it's they're just trying to find a way to make get away from staples and get away from old stuff. And, and, and Cold Bloodlust would have really hurt Goku's lineage. It would have really destroyed would've, that. Would have would have made the black deck unplayable. Yeah. For that reason, uh, the I believe Black had an answer to Cold Bloodlust built in its black set. I think it's minus zero kill zone. I think it's this card yeah. that prevents counterplays. Uh, yes. Uh, send three cards from the drop area to your warp draw card, and then your opponent may not activate counterplays skills for the duration of the turn. So this is a thing you can play. It's a zero drop, so you just you get it, go ahead and play it. Um, just that way you can protect yourself. Because not too many of the... Uh, of the black cards have deflect, and I, that was their answer. Yep. Um, I remember we're getting a lot of those in there. That's one of the yeah. one of the few that I've seen. So we got a, quite a few of those. Yeah, we, yes. we got we got a lot of playset of, of tech cards. So I think we're good on that. It's um, really very strategic when it comes to these and out. So I think we are going to kind of wrap it up here, guys. Um, there's there's a lot of good stuff. Everyone's already kind of really pushing on the the swap and the Goku lineage. Um, Bancroft here is really excited about doing Goku. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and touch basis on it really quickly for you. Um, the way it works is it has the deflect, so it does prevent cold bloodlust and counterplay cards. Um, it has triple strike, so three damage. It also has dual attack, which is great. So the way it works is you play it, you attack, and you have to turn your card sideways. Normally, you wouldn't be able to attack anymore. That card's done for the turn. But with dual attack, you can put him back into active mode and attack once more. But also, possible like strategies. That. You don't have to attack a second time. You can just re-put him into active mode, so that way your opponent cannot attack him and thereby saving him. Um, then his auto effect, auto, when you play this card with swap effect, Choose up to a total of three of your opponent's battle cards or energy, ignoring barrier, and switch them to rest mode. So again, like I said earlier, barrier prevents you from targeting cards with skills. This allows you to say, to hell with your barrier, I'm doing what I want. I want that one and that one and that piece of shit back there and turn it sideways. <laughs> They're done. It. <laughs> so that's what it does. It's Thanks, a really Ken. good card. Um, but in order to get him out, you have to play another card. We're going to pull him over here. This is the guy you play. You use the swamp mechanic to pull this one, pull out the big guy. And just real quick while you've got him out, yep. I think that card lets you play this right here. The new. As I, long as he's on the field, I'm pretty sure you can use that card to play the Victory Strike uh, Secret Rare Goku. Because the victory strike is, if I'm not mistaken, an EX evolve, which requires a Goku of a yellow Goku of energy cost five or more. Yes. So, so I, you wouldn't be able to use the Goku lineage effect, but you could use the other effect from the victory strike and which, just throw over top of it. Which makes that victory strike so much it, more viable. It makes it super viable, which is why it's already a very expensive card and it may see a little more price hike. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, you know, do your thing. Put it on there. We'll talk. Uh, we'll touch bases with you. We're gonna do a couple more videos. I think our next video is going to be a uh, once we have our decks built out of this set, yep. with a few tech pieces possibly from other and older sets because it's kind of needed. Um, we're gonna do a couple of test plays and show you guys what we can do with them. Uh, but thanks again for watching. And stay with us. And I will say, um, outside of just attack on TCG, we do a variety of other things, such as podcast. Uh, we, met, we mentioned some of it early, but uh, attack on kitchen. Uh, Jeff will be doing some cooking stuff that way. Uh, Explosive for, kitchen. And more than just Dragon Ball Super, potentially, it, uh, if my Hero Academia comes out, uh, I will a pick lot of it, people have. I will check that up as well. Yeah. I'm really, really excited that. about that. Uh, um, attack on board games. We'll be doing streams as well. We've got. D and D campaigns coming up. Yeah. Um, here in the next, uh, hopefully in the next week, we will be doing a couple of video game streams. Uh, new games that just dropped. We've got the new Gundam Breakers, fantastic game. Uh, I'll be doing a touch basis on that, giving you the pitfalls and the the upswings on it because it's got a lot of good. It's a few bad, but it's got a lot of good. 
Um, also, the Jurassic World Evolution, fantastic. Uh, even maybe a little bit of music as well. It's just a yeah. bunch of things that we like and we enjoy and we just want to share them with the rest of you. It's and, typically what it is. And anything that anyone would want to see, you know, yeah. we're not really opposed to anything. I would say a good word for us is Epicurean. We'll do just about anything. Yep. It's a big word, too. <laughs> that was a college word. That's what it was like. We're yeah. college, college boy. College boys. Anyway. All right. Well, again, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye. Take care.